greedy he kind of gets playing in the lane itself. Oh, we're heading out across the map. It's dancing out. <laughs> They're ready for that one for sure. Just smoke prepped as well. So they might just look to smoke in the dire jungle. And Liquid's already smoked. It looks like they're probably going to walk to mid and try to... There's some lines being drawn. Alright, got ourselves a little pause to start this game, but surely we've got underway in just a second. Rotating booths and the settings still need to be fixed, guys. Unbelievable. We got it. <laughs> No, it's going to be a, 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 an interesting thing to watch, I think, because you've got every single one of these Aster heroes have like a little weird, pokey, team fighty spell, which I like. You know, whether it's the Sven stun, you're throwing out some Pango stuff, it's all really nice there. Um, and then meanwhile, on the side of Team Liquid, it's like you commit those big ultimates. Uh, and once those are down, it's sort of probably going to be the point where Aster want to look for a fight. I think it's interesting that uh, there, there's an opportunity here to, like, to play a little bit aggressive uh, on both sides, but I also think that both sides would really like to just kind of like chill out for a while, you know, get some stacks going, farm it up. So this could be one of those games where things are, are very relaxed. Uh, but to me, if, if there's someone who's going to be like running this show, it's probably going to be Boxy on the side of Liquid to try and get things going. And if it was for, for Aster, probably has to be XXS on the Pango. Yeah, Liquid's, their big time in this game is the triple BKB. Mars, Shadow Thief, Death Prophet all want their BKBs and then don't die to the Lash, don't die to the Pango, the CM. Yeah. They kind of all just can walk away. And on the side of Aster, no one really wants to buy an early BKB on their team. The Lash Hack wants a Bloodstone, the Sniper wants to go all of his range so you can't even catch him. So it's... It is all in this pango right now to whether he wants to go defusal or blink, try to set up with rolls and catch. And the scariest thing right now is how much Liquid can do with their BKB timings once they get it. If they can Roche with the Exo, if they can take all their towers with the Shadow Fiend. It's going to be a lot of grouping, and Aster's going to be happy just playing the farm game. Well, you can see the decision right now from Aster to wrap around up on the top side. We'll see if Liquid do run into them there or not. Uh, as Boxy's already heading on up to place a ward up on that high ground and just holding steady in the mid lane. Pichu's leading the charge here. Just holding that hammer. And now drop down a ward in the jungle as they're going to start heading down this hill. Pichu spots out Matumbo Man, oh, a whoops. quick little sight, and yeah, the pings are there. They immediately realize where they're at. You just need like one more step. Yeah. You know, just a little bit more that way, and maybe they get the follow-up split Earth. So no chance for a kill there. But do get some wards down. Uh, Liquid's unlikely to get taken away since they're sort of staying on their side of the map. And it looks like it's going to be a trade-off of two bounty runes apiece. Liquid has this nice deep ward next to Roshan. Uh, I think it's pretty cool because the they there's a chance Aster swapped their lanes up. They put the Shadow Fiend mid, the Lush Rack in a side lane, and maybe Liquid will want to swap their lanes up depending on what they see. So now they get to kind of see where everyone's going. Fortunately for them, Aster's just doing kind of standard lane. Mm -hmm. Hango with the CM top, Lush mid, Sniper's going bot. So nothing out of the ordinary right now besides the Death Prophet safe lane is a little interesting yeah. right now this patch it is something liquid likes running yeah they i mean they you know if they were looking they're like yeah okay they've just done this like very recently so it shouldn't be too much of a surprise to aster and we've it's actually interesting. we've seen some teams less willing i think to swap the uh the heroes and the players in a sense like there's a lot of teams who would maybe put their five on this mercy just because it's in that safe lane which liquid is you know they're much more comfortable just doing something like this in this setup because they know that like for the vast majority of the game they you know boxy has this identity on the mercy that they really want He's to still achieve the, the four yeah. yeah right exactly which fits in how they want it to play for him. Um, as you can take a look here mid, Shadow Fiend versus Lesh. Uh, gonna get a couple of raise hits off on there, just get one denied out. So, Ori, I, I think it's worth noting that this guy, I feel like last year at TI, had one of the best performances that we've seen from him in the entire history uh, of his play. And well, now, to be after fair, Puck was really broken. I okay. mean, yes. you know, he's <laughs> this guy's a really good point. No, not to take anything away from Ori. Right. But, but when that happened, he ended up getting knocked out by the rest of these teammates here. And uh, then ended up, you know, coming together with them. We'll see if they can keep that type of success that they had last year going in this one. You know, there's going to be a lot of eyes on the bot lane right now. Sniper, once he hits his level 3, level 4 timing, he has some points in headshot. He has some points in shrapnel. That's when the they can just kind of run down the Mars. And... The Disruptor, a lot of the time, he doesn't save heroes. He just kind of watches him die. So if Sai walks up a little too far, once the Sniper hits level 3, it could be a little scary. Yeah, I feel like since Undying started buying like six mangoes and decaying, doing the uh, the Disruptor thing just looks a, a whole lot weaker. It's just like, no, I, I can spam too, guys. Every, everyone's doing that now. Yeah. They just buy six mangoes on the support. They just spam the 
Undyings don't buy tangos anymore. Right. I mean, six mangoes, maybe a sal. You don't need them. Easy peasy. Just moving on forward in life. They you get a little bit of pressure there. Pullback now on the Bobica is a couple of punches with Tumba Man trying to kill him off. And won't quite be enough there, but even with all those mangoes, at least it'll have some pretty good regen uh, on the CM to try and get back into the lane quickly. None of the supports have made a move towards mid yet. I think probably at the four minute water runs, I, we could see Boxy move towards mid. If he gets a jump on the Lesh, pulls him back, that's a pretty nice kill for them. Pretty easy on the Lesh. Certainly the uh, the most mobile as well, right? You know, I mean, we all know Crystal Maiden. She's <laughs> Not the fastest hero in the world. It takes a little while. Yeah, Marcy gives some flashbacks to Earth Spirit from a couple years ago when every time, every every position four, they pick Earth Spirit, they get level two, they TP mid, roll kick, your mid laner's dead. It's a constant play. And of course, both of these heroes very susceptible to getting kills in the mid lane, uh, depending upon their positioning. So we'll have to watch for that and any of those early TPs. But for now, at least, Aster looking good in all of their lanes. Uh, particularly the Lesh there, four denies. As Zai talked about it, is getting ran down a little bit by that level two shrapnel. One already playing a bit aggressive on the Mars. The boots pick up on Zai is gonna be really important, but he ends up going for a raindrop bracer. I think he just wants to tank up. The disruptor does have slows and glimpse, so he has ways to kind of push them off of him. It's more so, once they're onto this, oh. Oh my god, quick jump and kill. And that's the rotation we were talking about. Yeah, that, that's Marcy, right? You know, that's why this hero. All the phones popping up in the audience. Yeah, I see you all. Checking right away, <laughs> checking that email. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what they do. Uh, regardless, uh, that first blood coming on out. And oh, what? Someone got one. I saw they're celebrating. Nice. Good job. <laughs> As uh, Matumbo Man is also going to get a little bit of pressure there on XXS and the pullback. Boxy ready to dispose and finds the body blocks. This Pango in trouble. This is one of those heroes that really can get uh, completely abused in the laning stage. It's one of the worst feelings when you die after like Swashbuckle 2. Zai, Chase, continued to run down. Monet right on top of him along with Pichu, oh. but it's not quite enough. Dodges back behind the trees and keeps himself alive. Maybe a spear through the trees looking for a kill. Can they get it? Doesn't quite look like it as he was salving back up. Bobica dies in the top lane while this is happening, but 3-0 start for Liquid. All off the back of the Marcy rotation. He yeah. gets level three, TP's mid, kills the Lesh, walks top, gets two kills back to back, and there's a lot of pressure on Liquid right now. It looks bots not the best. It's not terrible, but Sniper's having a great time down here. They're Lesh. Uh, you it's know, gonna be the Shadow Fiend just kind of crushing mid now. Yeah, it's gonna be a really hard game as well. Like if Monet gets off to a good start, like trying to find the sniper in the back line, you know, we, we don't have one of those classic counters. Some of those classic counters don't feel like very good heroes right now. You know, you think about like the Spectre in, in particular is something that like used to be such an easy answer at the end of the draft. Like this two have been like, oh easy, but now, that's a good way to do it though. You catch him running. Uh, that is stun there. Ichu keeps him alive and well. And now Monet chasing, looking to run down oh, Zai nice. again. Another round of the shrapnel. He's gotta run through it, trying to escape, but Zai uh -huh. is gonna be brought down. Monet making quick work of that Mars. That was pretty much a defensive spear that he missed, right? Like, yeah. just like get the sniper further away when he went for the retreat. It's a it's really nice stun there. to kind of break the glimpse spear off. Again, I think Astro right now, they're just playing for the Pango level six. These lanes are not mm -hmm. amazing for them, just outside of the bot lane. And they need the Pango six to be able to rotate to the side lanes. The Lush Rack has some play on mid, but anytime the Shadow Fiend is just having a stable, strong lane. You don't really want to bring heroes to the lane and give them opportunities to get more kills. Especially with a Mercy being there as Fox is already back. And down bottom, more aggression coming out as Insania and Zai were trying to take down Monet there. Couldn't quite Radiant find him all the way, but Boxy killed. moves in, snipes a courier, no chance for a kill as they did already get that DD rune on Mick A. And Boxy, like he did run right through Boca as well, so. They're going to know there's a ward here somewhere. Maybe he'll miss on the sentry because it can be a bit tough to find it, but I'm going to keep an eye, try and keep an eye at least on these stacks that Bobica's getting ready here for one of his allies. Try and queue those ones up for sure. As Well, he'll take a creep along the way too. That's what the CMs do. Exorcism popped up top. Matumba Man trying to get some good pressure onto this tier one tower. As success is just going to have to deal with this should be fine. It's about down to half HP. I really like this exorcism. So I feel like 
it, it, uh, it ends up waiting to like level seven or level eight to get popped anyway. When people tend to get it like at this part, because like someone has to rotate. You're waiting for other allies to be ready to use it. it. Oh, that's good. Oh, and in fact, if they can get this kill, this would be huge. XX has nice able spot. to dodge the raise, but it has another one in a second. No. Couple more punches, XXS going to die. They still have Glimpse here too. And so down they, bottom. They can't even TP in, right? They're still chasing onto Zai, but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to find him there. But Bobica Glimpse back in, a couple more hits, and Mickey finds another finish. So five to one. And in fact, after they make that move, they're going to TP bottom with Tumba Man. Goes in and finds another kill. Liquid are just cooking here. Yeah, Mickey TP's back mid of, uh, right away too to catch this wave. So this is so much gold going to Liquid after these kills. This is a really nice movement. All, all the sieges got defended. Zai kills the siege bot. Mickey kills the siege mid. They kind of alleviate all this five minute pressure that generally can happen when you play around the Lush Rex. And then they just break the lanes apart instantly. Shadowfin goes top, Death Prophet TP's bot. They keep grouping their cores. Every play now is probably going to involve two cores in the lane. Whether it's the Shadow Fiend, the Mars, the Mars Death Prophet, they're always going to want them to play together because they're the strongest heroes on the map. And this is a big one. Requiem out. Couple raises. Gets yes. a kill. Dude, Liquid are looking on fire this morning. I feel like it's going to play. Yeah, now Matsu, though, at least is in trouble. Headshot procs are there. Yeah. Very unlikely to survive here unless I can quickly get six. Well, another couple oh, he just rounds. Got six. The Spirit Siphon trying to make it happen. Is it going to be enough? But Tumbo Man living Dude, somehow, in some way. Are you kidding me? But Tumbo Man walks away, does finally get brought down. But they got the kill onto the sniper. They do lose Zai. Have they gotten a little bit too big for their britches? Aster brought numbers back and forth in just a valley of death. Boxy 2 will fall, so it looked tight for a moment, but the penalty was big. Yeah, this is where Zai just needed to not get six, because, you know, <laughs> the arena gave them hope. <laughs> hope is the most dangerous thing, Trent. At the same time, Disruptor's getting some beauty time in the top lane, almost level six. Static Storm. Anytime you catch the Pango, the Pango rolls the fight right now. Every yeah. time the Pango shows up, the fight's going to be somewhat in Aster's favor. So if you catch him with a Static Storm, you catch him with a Silence from Death Prophet or a Mars Arena, that's how you kind of are aiming to play these fights. And you can see that uh, Aster's still keeping an eye on what, everything that happened top, because Bobica's running back there now with sentries. Like, he has not forgotten. He's like, we lost that fight there. Still some stacks. They've actually blocked off uh, that same camp there as well. So uh, Bobica, though, unfortunately, not going to find an OBS this time. So. The good. scary thing right now for Aster is a lot of their heroes want a lane. Pango wants us in a lane. Sniper wants us in a lane. Leshrac's somewhat comfortable going to the jungle just because of how fast he farms. But on the side of Liquid, they're they're giving lanes to Disruptor for free. They they don't really need. They don't feel the need to sit in all their lanes. They just feel the need to group up and yeah. force plays. And that's the power of uh, Marcy, right? So like, I think that's why Boxy like it's just Marcy Clockwork Tusk. Like they, it just lets them do this exact same style every time. Scan was able to hit there. Liquid walk up the hill after the fact and now going to try and contest this stack that's been built up a little. It's three camps and one of them's the Mud Golem, so not easy to sneak that one. And in fact, Aster will zone back Matamba Man. You can see how confident Foxy is, though. He just is able to walk up hills and if you go on him, he just rebounds away and not much to do. There's no... Oh, or rebound on top of you. Up top. Now, nah, Bobica. Pace. Gonna get chased and the dual supports come in to kill the other one. Ori looking for a little bit of retribution here. We'll run into Insania and while they have glimpse, he's not gonna get glimpsed that far. They move in, XXS right on top, Insania in trouble and likely to fall. So Aster make a solid move, able to claim a kill. It's it's good. This is this is what Astro needs to do. They need to group around. Probably the Lush and the Pango need to play together, try to force towers, force objectives with the roll. And anytime Liquid sees where the Pango is on the map, they can just go to the opposite side, force towers, force objectives. And Astro's either going to have to TP in five heroes and even still lose the fight, the tower, or they just commit to a trade. Yeah, now they're going to bring three heroes to the mid lane as well here, so... Perhaps some quick action. They, they do have smoke if they want to, but they're seeing that there's no real rotations down bottom. They don't necessarily need to join up, so... Gonna wait till they push this out a little bit here before they start uh, playing a little bit more aggressive. I'm sure they want Link up though with Zai since he does have that arena. Smoke indeed as Liquid head down. Will run into Pichu here. Zai playing dumb. Well, actually find him as oh, they're looking for the target. other kill onto Boca. So get the glimpse back, pull him in. Stun, keeping him away and actually just dropping Yo, Ori. Ori just keeping in the middle. Uh, in some trouble. Ori likely to fall now in the middle of all of them. 
So they get one kill on the Marcy, but then lose their big bad Lesh. XXS shows up. This could be the fight winner. And with that, Liquid are going to get a little bit of a disengage. Zai trying to find a snipe with the spear. Doesn't manage to get it. And he too is going to get punished. But Aster, a little bit bold with the Lesh. They still get a couple kills in return. It's a very bold TP. Yes. <laughs> There was a, I think, a slight miscommunication with XSS because he, he, like, he sees the Pango there and he head roll and he's like, oh, okay, like we're gonna, we're gonna have a fight together, right? I think here, he also right? sees everyone's going on the Crystal Maiden. Who's yeah, ulting. He's like, they're distracted. Yeah. They're on the CM. They're gonna have to use all their stuns there, and I'll be have free reign of the fight. I think right now, Aster, they need the Blink Dagger on the Pango and the level or the minute 15 shard for Sven is gonna be really impactful versus the Shadow Fiend armor and the Death Prophet can see right here as well that they did immediately change <laughs> up and left. They're like, all right, Box, you got that one right. <laughs> so the rest of the team. Yeah, there was a the recent ledge. change now that the outpost TPs, I think, are default seven seconds to start. Mm. So now there's just so much time. Once you see the TP, you have a lot of time to just walk backwards, go take the fight. And you, you see the idea. He wants to backstab the yes. fight kind of and appear behind them. But a nice read by Liquid to just change targets instantly. Yeah, no successful uh, pincer maneuvers here, unfortunately. They did still get Zion that in a uh, little engagement, though. And he has definitely been the most hurt of the cores in the entire game. You can see SF nursing that s pretty substantial lead uh, over the rest of the cores. And if you're Liquid, that's definitely what you want to see. But uh, how much of a concern is it that you've still got that tri-core from Aster looking good there? I think it's all on the Shadow Queen BKB timing. If he gets it and they're able to actually force objectives and force timings, It'll look really good for Liquid, and they're just gonna their gold leader is just gonna skyrocket off the BKB. Shadowfiend's BKB will give Death Prophet and Mars both of their BKBs just off of his. And on Aster, all they need to do is find a way to kind of slow the bleeding, slow the timings down. Because once they hit their timings, they hit the Bloodstone, maybe in another item on the Lush. The sniper hits his uh Dragonlance Maelstrom is generally what people are going, or a BKB, then he starts pumping out damage. The Sven gets shard. Yeah. Pango's gonna get this. It looks like he's actually gonna go for a Wraith Pack instead of the Blink. That's a pretty cool idea to try and, like, because he is just building into that concept. Like, he knows what his idea is, right? Like, I need to initiate and I need to try and, like, like add some additional tank ability for my Lesh Rack. Yeah, he, he, he needs to somewhat carry the game in a sense yeah. of his, the amount of impact he's gonna have in terms of the team fight, but his carry is just being in there, tanking and stunning. He doesn't have to damage heroes, he doesn't have to do much, he just has to exist there and create chaos. The thing I've learned in this TI is a Wraith Pack is a good item. It's a very good item. It's <laughs> my number one takeaway, and XXS queuing that one up. So and Right now, Liquid do not have a Wraith Pack queued up. Mm. The Wraith Pack advantage will be in Aster's hand. Yeah, for this is a pretty hard game to figure one out for Liquid, I would say. <laughs> yeah, the, the cores have very important items they need to buy. Mars. You would think that the Vlads is very good on the hero, which it is, but the Blink and the BKB are just too powerful for yeah. what he needs to do as a hero in the fights. Oh, but Foxy. Courier actually miss up hill there. Chasing. Side. They throw out the stun, does a little sneak to the side for Pichu, and that keeps him alive. So still a very even game as we wait for these timings to come online. And Liquid hoping to control this side of the map with uh, all the tier ones now pretty much claimed. Yeah, I mean, that BKB is on the way here very soon for Mickey, right? And then uh, they probably go up the triangle, get some wards down, set prepping boards of Roche. Liquid's, uh, I would say Liquid's stronger in a sense of team fight slash like holding areas. Anytime Liquid wants to walk to an area, take in, say like, this is ours, you fight us, Asher's gonna walk away. They're not yeah. gonna wanna take these fights. They're gonna walk away, keep farming, hitting their timings. But Aster, you know, if Liquid walks too far forward, the Sniper gets a nice shrapnel, gets a bunch of hits off. That's where Liquid just has to be careful of their amount of aggression. They have to control it. They have to keep just taking the small advantages, keep building, keep building. And then at some point, that's when they hit the Roche, hit the Throne. Olga has been given a lot of space in this mid lane. Already has drums completed, going in for the Aether Lens Radiance next. Which is going to give even attack. more of that power to just sort of poke and prod. As Liquid go for the wraparound back behind the Tier 1 tower. Won't run into anybody there. As uh, you can see, Aster only leaving that one support mid and just keeping the lave shoved yeah. out whenever possible. It's a dangerous place right now, this mid lane. You know, some smoked up enemies on the other side there. The BKB is finished on Shadow Fiend, and they want this tier one mid. It opens up the map a lot. You can go into both jungles through the mid lane. You can actually push oh. your creeps past the tower. He skipped the blink. Yeah. Finished the full Wraith Pact. All right, Pango gets it done now. Liquid Perfect. right now, right. I think he noticed the Death Prophet went for Yules first. The Mars is also not having an amazing game. He went Falcon Blade. So his game's not terrible, but it's not going to be a fast BKB. So 
he's not really going to have issues catching heroes with the roll or being forced to start the fights purely with roll. He just kind of has to be able to, you know, when arena drops, you roll in and save your team. Yeah. Or when they start kind of walking in up your hill, you start the fight with roll. I, I think it's just interesting because now I feel like they don't have much initiative. I think it's very hard for, like, let's say they do want to, you know, take a fight. They have a good opportunity. It feels like it's going to be very difficult for Esther. This uh, round, again, you've got the Blink Dagger Plus done on do that. Zai as the stun finds him just out of nowhere. Quick and easy with the smoke kill. Mickey was not prepped for that one. Yeah, Can they find any more? You just have a great ward. That's a that's a great ward to have. That's just a free, free fight. Oh, pulls him out. Oh, and pulled him out of the arena. Tries to get out of there. Ori now finds one. Zai in trouble. This fight has gone terribly for Liquid as Monet is going to run down this Mars. Matumbo Man still surviving through it, though. Can he do the damage the rest of his team couldn't? I don't think so. Matumbo Man also starting to fall. Only the Pango has died. And on the other side, Aster take down everybody but the supports. That was a nice just chaining the plays. Yeah, it the was so fast. Kill and in, the, in the same role, he keeps rolling down yeah. behind the tower. He forces his play, and he does his role. He goes and he dies. He takes a bunch of spells. He forces Liquid to want to keep continue fighting, and the arena, the sniper, and the lash. But they have no damage now because everything's being used on the Pango. Yeah, instantly like running towards that mid lane, dropping that uh, additional ward down to give even more vision because you know lacking that blink dagger, it, it is the vision, right? You know, talking about like it's poor initiation at this point because he went for the full rate back. It doesn't matter if Sven can run up smoked and just throw a stun. That, that's like the best case scenario as a support Sven, particularly. Uh, you know, aside from your shard, that's kind of your other big thing, right? And you can immediately see that Mickey pinged out. All right, they've got wards up in this area. It doesn't quite connect though on any of those uh, observers. See if Insania is able to spot the other yeah, one. Yeah, it's this or not. really nice deep ward above the outpost. Yeah, that Astra has. It just has this tiny sliver of vision of the camp where they just saw a shadow fiend. If he was, if he was like ten units to the right, maybe right. he doesn't even get caught by that stun. But Insania gets the D ward. Wow. Ten to eleven, and you can see the replay here. For a moment, I Dying thought that it was, count. you know, Zombie maybe even count. Pango could have survived through that since Foxy had pulled him just out of the static storm, but it didn't end up matter. He was still silenced. Yeah, they had to, like, chain the the, uh, the Death Bravo one uh, additionally as well because of that. But, yeah, Zai, uh, unfortunately, not able to uh, to get the fight they want. Probably, like, because it took so long to take down the Pango, essentially, right? right? Like, he had no follow-up uh, from his friends in time. Yeah, they have the the Lush and the Sniper are very strong. So when, when you're forced to use spells on just a Pango, you're kind of letting these damage cores survive the spells. And like we said, Liquid is between the Mars and the Disruptor. They're very, you know, 10, 15 seconds of the team fight. They do so much. They have so much control, so much fight. And then it's maybe on the Marcy to just continue to catch. Maybe it's on the Death Prophet to just keep being able to run in. But this 10 to 15 seconds of Liquid's fight is their strongest. So when you just force that all on a Pango and you don't deal with the Sniper, he just gets free reign in the fight. I mean, the good news is, though, is that he didn't have time to BKB and waste his nine second charge. <laughs> there you go. All right. right. They still have the shot of him BKB. The positives. <laughs> Gotta look at him. Matu is also finishing his BKB up. He's about 300 gold away. Ooh. Heads up there. Zai gets away just in time. XXS will not manage to catch onto that Mars. But a really good fight one, like we talked about for Aster. There still is that bottom tier one tower that they have yet to claim. And the the scary thing I see right now uh, for the side of Liquid is that Zai just has a blink dagger, no BKB, Yo. and he's basically he has to be able to blink in and stun and preferably survive when he blinks in and arena stuns. But there's so many different things on Astro that can catch him. Either cancels blink between like the shrapnel or random swashbuckle, or maybe he just blinks in and gets instantly stunned by the pango roll. True. And it's just a lot on the back of him to if he gets these good spears, these good arenas. It's going to be great for Liquid. I, I think that Aster as well have an like, excellent read on everything that Liquid want to do right now. Like, you know, you pointed out the side of the game. Like, this is their timing. They want these BKBs. It is, it is something that Aster are also well aware of. And so the positioning of their uh, their heroes are, like, always having, like, the Leshrac, the Sven, and the CM kind of, like, staying up front while you then have the Sniper just farming a little bit behind them. Pango sort of nearby as well, can join very quickly with the roll. They're shutting out that area of the map for such a long time that Liquid have missed out on that Roche timing. Max amounts of Force Staffs getting picked up for Liquid. They have the Dragonlance uh, completed, full one Hurricane Pike, but you can see as Aster ready to move on in, Liquid, they have an idea that this is happening, but it's going to come too late. Yeah, they had wards nearby, but it was too late. They might still look to fight. Aster might not expect oh, this fight. Oh, Zai, he's running right into a Monet the there. The have dream. it, but the BKB, it's out already. But Tumbo Man trying to survive, has the BKB running on top of Pichu, now trying to take down Monet. All three cores on top of him, but it's not quite going to be enough. The Static Storm, a good connection. Oh, okay. The Spear, they got him! Monet will fall. That's 
one life. Still a lot of exorcism left. And meanwhile, Boxy gets the stun with that rebound. Requiem up on the high ground. Keeps chasing down. Monet in trouble. Wanting to kill him all off. Does he have enough? He's surviving the little sniper. He's so strong. He's so big. What did it happen? Oh, Insania now turns. They didn't have enough for the second life. That Warcry armor coming in from the Sven completely demolished up. And the root from Bobaka, Liquid, they're all going to fall. Pichu came in like riding from down the hill. He had like 10% HP. I'll save you. Stuns him on Mickey, runs over, gets another Warcry off. And they turn that entire fight around. They just they couldn't quite get that last bit of damage after the Aegis. It was looking really scary. Uh, Ori actually didn't get his ult off. So he got silenced with no ult running. He pops his Bloodstone, he gets silenced again. He doesn't get his ult off. So he didn't even lifesteal at all in that fight. He's like almost full mana. So <laughs> he did 600 damage. <laughs> really big carry. Yeah. That is crazy. And it, it still took them so long to take him down. And especially the way it starts, right? Like they find Monet, he's forced to very early BKB. All he does is hit Zai the entire time. Zai is going to back away. Yeah, <laughs> into the bulwark. He's the back away. Wave this up. Great force staff play there as well. But then Zai eventually gets the blink in. But on this reset, it's so hard to believe that with a, a Requiem from the high ground like that, they couldn't get this finish. Yeah, absolutely insane. <laughs> and Pichu, he just comes like running in from the right. Right now, like, there he guys, is. I'm here, don't I'm worry. worry. <laughs> <laughs> just barely, and he it's survives. enough. Yeah. What a huge play from Aster as they are able to survive that fight. And again, very even, even in the live game right now. Uh, but things could start spinning pretty quickly out of control if Liquid aren't careful. Yeah, a, a lot of that fight, I think, actually was on the Pango, even though it didn't look like he had much impact. He rolls and it forces the Death Prophet BKB and the Shadow Fiend BKB. Yeah. And they, they hit him, you know, Shadow Fiend takes him down maybe 75% health, but he's fine trading roll for your BKB. He knows that if he uses his roll, he can still push Rage back, he can still be tanky. But once you press your BKB, you can't really fight the CM, you can't fight the, all the stunts on the side of Aster. Yeah, and now after that Wraith Pack, he's already picked up the shard, and he's just about to get his Blink Dagger there as well. So, and have a whole other level coming from XSS soon. Well, Tier 1 Tower taking the bottom, and Aster, they are continuing this onslaught here. 4k gold lead. They're going to see Zai in behind now, catching that next wave. Yeah, so there is a, a glyph here as well from Liquid. They are going to pop it, just kill the wave, so... We'll see uh, how dedicated they are. Or is uh, a BKB being the now, first so... tier two, yeah. It's it's very hard, I think, for Liquid to now fight, like, ever take a fight into Aster. Whenever Aster sets up, the Sniper has heroes at the front to protect him, the Pango's going to get his roll up. That's where it's scary, but anytime Aster walks into the stuns, the Disruptor glimpse, you know, they go too far hitting a tower and he gets clips back. That's where Liquid just pumps out the Whoa, damage. Oh, Zai, big play. He catches the Blink Dagger Courier. It was a flying on its way out to XXS. Oh, that's real big. Yeah. So a nice little window here. I mean, again, there's no Roche for another four minutes, uh, at the very least, since that Aegis was immediately oh. reclaimed. So likely to have a little bit of downtime here before a big push, but they could go for some type of a smoke play uh, if there is that item timing that they wanted to hit, like the blink. Yeah, to me, it buys time for Zai's BKB as well, right? Like, he's finding all these waves inside the map. He just gets it now. So if they were able to fight, force a fight now from Liquid, and he knows that there was a blink dagger on there, it could be a great timing for them. Four of them on the map. All of them up and ready. Eight and nine seconds. As... Boxy also getting close. He's about 800 gold or so away from finishing off his. Yeah, and right now the vision advantage is in Liquid's favor. They've been seeing quite a few of these movements here from Aster because of the wards that they have, whereas uh, Aster have nothing. They, they can't see anything that's going on on that dire side of the map right now. So they're going to rely on these waves finally getting pushed out to see if they can spot something. My favorite thing right now is we're going back to the old days of Shadow Fiend, Shadow Blade, Sniper, Shadow Blade. <laughs> Jeez, that was, that was when I started playing Dota. Every game was just a drow building a shadow blade and Rickies. There's just invis everywhere. <laughs> I mean, still pretty strong when you can build up into that uh, that break. Love to see that one. But sniper, all of his attack range will be gone. So sad. I I think uh, right now Liquid still has a lot of damage, Ooh. even though they're slightly behind. Force out that BKB. Zai might need to throw the arena if he wants to live here. Even. Yeah, it's... Bag it up, you know. Get on out of there, buddies. Do use the glimpse, okay. No Ori here in this fight. Could take another one after. Mickey chasing. Invis, Monet is also gone and away. Can they do it? Doesn't look like it. 
That's a hard grab. Uh, after already glimpsing, of course. That was a, that was a cool little thing by XSS. Um, so when he swashes, he swashes without hitting them. Because when you hit them, it gives you vision, and there's a chance he gets glimpsed off of his swash backwards. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. So he does a nice little thing where he just swashes and intentionally does it in the opposite direction, so there's no chance they provides vision to Liquid. Something we can watch for there later. They uh, maybe catches himself out because of that. But for now, he's also got the roll-up completed. Ten seconds until his Blink Dagger is back uh, and in his possession. Liquid right now, they either need to kill kill in a spear. He hits a spear on the sniper, he'll just get blown up. Mm -hmm. Or they need to be able to survive the BKBs. And honestly, they want to try to hold the arena for after the BKBs. You saw in the fight in the tri-camp, uh, Zai just kind of kept walking at him his entire BKB duration. And he ended up did catching him after the BKB. And if it weren't for the Aegis, they would have won that fight. So Radiant's right now, they need to find a way to force BKBs without pressing Arena. I think that's going to be a lot on Foxy with his BKB to just jump on the sniper, pressure ult, kind of force his ability, his defensive abilities, his BKB. Mm -hmm. That's where Zai is just waiting, watching the fight, and then he blinks in, gets the Arena after the BKBs, and Mick is able to do all the damage. It has to be like a, a very quick follow-up, it feels like, where it's like Foxy and then like Matu's in at the same time, and that's that's when you have these like sort of side lane heroes like kind of waiting to come in, like the Mars, the Disruptor, and, uh, and the Shadow Fiend. I mean, it, get their moments spotted. It is worth noting, you know, there's a reason a lot of people ban Marcy. It, th this is one of the strongest timings in the entire game. Uh, and when you get that BKB, you can just solo cores if they're not careful and don't have friends nearby. Phase boots BKB, the scary, the scariest timing. <laughs> so much damage. It's kind of insane. As we will have a pause here. It's boxy mid flight. And it will be an interesting couple of minutes to watch too as we get ready for Roche to respawn. One minute and still it's capable of popping back up. And like you were talking about that vision, uh, Aster do have one ward up on the high ground right above the Roche pit. Uh, meanwhile, Liquid have one right above their tier two tower uh, up on the other side of the map as well. Interesting, Boboko actually went for a Yules instead of the, I think he was going Aetherlands. Yeah, he was for a while. I'm kind of curious as to what the, what, what's his goal with it? Maybe it's to try to get the Marcy off of his sniper. That'd be my guess too. Oh, they just smoked on top of that ward. Then Boboko laughed. They have a oh, they have a gem. Yeah, okay. okay. They, they saw it as they smoked. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. All right, that's fine. Just a bait, it's fine. So if they go farm now, Liquid's gonna still be scared. Yeah, that's true. You, it's not like you can't uh, just assume like, oh, they, you know, they saw that. All right. Gem purchase now by Insania. As they are hanging out by another ward, so that is all of the vision pretty much for Liquid in this area, taking off the map. And with Roche capable of respawning soon, and in fact, it's going to be one minute away. Uh, Liquid need to be a little bit wary about that their positioning to make sure they don't give up a free Aegis. Everyone's just worried about getting their next timing due to the fact of how hard it is for either team to really jump the other one. So everyone just wants to be able to be the ones who you walk into them and you lose the fight. That's why you kind of make is just kind of farming a lot. And it's just because he, if he has the damage, he can do everything Liquid needs him to do. I think uh, Matu, nice choice here with the Shiva's guard, right? Versus the, the Leshrac too. Oh, Very cool. Tremendous. That extra regen reduction will be super helpful. So things to watch for here again is all of the vision into the favor of Aster. They get a Silver Edge completed on Shadow Fiend, and we'll see if they can now holding that outpost on Aster uh, keep this area under control. But a smoke up from Liquid. Let's see where the they go. Two big things right now are if Pango gets roll off, it's probably going to be good for Aster and whether or not Zai is able to hold his arena for after the Sniper BKB. Those are the two big things, oh, and man. depending on what happens, it kind of shows who's going to win the fight. They're so blind. They're just running in. They drop down a ward. That one is scouted. They had vision in the area, they so actually saw Aster the sniper knows. The they know he's there. Getting broke right at the start. Punched a couple of times, but Tumbleman completely obliterated right at the start. Zai tries to escape from there, but Monet runs him down. Liquid just ran into death. It's so hard to try to take Ares away, but they need to. You and need to get control of Roche. Pressure. You need to, they want to set up to defend the tower. They, you want to always be able to fight. It always feels very stressful when you keep asking yourself, you're asking the team like, hey guys, when can we fight? When can we take this fight? And you don't get an answer. Oh, that roll up started just at the exact perfect time as well there too. Thunder into the roll up, complete perfect chain stun, no saves uh, there in time. Not a whole lot you can do unless Box is going to find a shard or something here, right? Like. Uh, he is stuck and done, and that is a free Roche now. 
side of Aster. Aster. Concussive grenade also picked up now for Monet. Has a little more space distance in the fights. If he wasn't hard enough to catch already. Right. I think for, for Liquid, uh, obviously there's an Aegis, so you're going to be probably thinking about your high ground defense. But again, all they really need is to be able to start a fight cleanly. They need to catch the Pango. They need to catch the Sniper without an Aegis. Make it sound so easy, Gunner. <laughs> Uh, I mean, this is this is a, a tough one now. And Aster just looking incredibly clean. Each of the moves that we've seen them make around the map, it's been with purpose. They've had vision down early on. Liquid are the ones that are trying to come in and oust them from those areas. And as you said earlier, it does become a problem when they're already set up and positioned well. I think anytime either team has a hill, has a kind of a ward or a high ground, and they get walked into, they're going to win. No, even though the Liquid's down 7,000 gold, I still think they have the ability to fight. But Aster is just, they just are constantly forcing so much pressure between towers, between Roche, that Liquid are always the ones who feel like they have to walk into them. An Aeon disc that I saw getting completed pretty soon too. I did see XSS has one. He has a one locked, so yeah. he's ready. He's he's pretty much prepared. The only concern with it is uh, he'll still die to the static storm if he gets caught. Right. But now the Mars can't really spear him and just blow him up. It's, it's pretty nice. Well, tier two tower going to be hit. This is the last outer tower for Liquid. With that said, they've been in this position many times. This lineup has had plenty of comebacks. We'll see if today is going to be another one of those instances as Aster are now going to split up a little bit. Ori on the other side of the map. So Zai kind of in a pretty good position for a fight. They get the BKB off, misses on the spear though. Pichu caught for the moment, roll back and forth, catching onto the Shadow Fiend. What a great Gotta roll Monet. coming out from XXS and Monet. I don't know if they have the damage to bring him down. He's there waving, looking for a high five. And even without Ori, they take this fight perfectly. Chase down another Matumba man in some trouble, trying to get a little bit of separation, but they'll kill Insania to boot. And all dice, you know, the fight breaks down. Oh. He just runs to the creep wave. XXS, he assembles it. And now in some more trouble, the ulti down. Godlike Monet. Liquid do not have answers for this Aster lineup. It's the same thing over and over. Yeah. Aster holds an area. Liquid feels forced to make a move. They walk into the ward. The fight gets hard. Anytime, it's just Pango. Pango's always going to get his roll off. You can't walk into a ward and prevent the Pango from rolling up. It, it's kind of like uh, they have the same weakness for both the Pango and the Sniper. Right? They just have no way of stopping their, their the very beginning of the fight for their game plan to start. That was a nice uh, concussive as well there from Monet for that initial distance. Making it kind of getting like baited in, right? Just like drawn further and further and then XSS easy cleanup. Because even if they hit the spear, what? They, they kill the Sven a little yeah. faster? Right. Uh, they, there's not enough control right now to deal with the Sniper. Monet has been playing such a fabulous game, and I think a lot of people, you know, it's, it was back at TI7, LFY, the lineup that he was playing on when he first really made a name for himself. And, you know, after a lot of those other really well-storied players retired, he kind of found himself lack in a place. And now he's found it with this group of players and Aster looking to continue their dominance in this upper bracket. We'll see if Monet can keep it up. The rest of Aster can make the plays that they need. Ori. Blinks forward aggressively, won't find anybody. Is going to be glimpsed back. XXS still threatening a roll. What can they do? The stun, it's there. On to Matumba Man. Yule Scepter keeps him alive. Ori trying to run down Boxy. Matumba Man gets out. They pulled them into a fight with roll wearing off. Can they do anything? But Sniper, he's still always there. Ready to plink away. Ho, ho, ha, ha. Chase him down again. Mickey, Invis, everybody that walks forward is getting blasted. They're Man, in so much a... trouble, they can't even force a glimpse. <laughs> <laughs> what a what a freaking destructive draft for Master. Butterfly is now finished for Monet. He... So it's, look how much damage he's done. He's done quite a bit, yeah. He's done more than all the other cores of Liquid combined, almost. So it was a really nice sniper. It, again, you know, it solves the Shadow Fiend, it solves the Death Prophet. It kind of fixes these heroes where they walk in slowly and they just keep killing everything that stands in front of them because he doesn't stand in front of them. He stands over the hill, mm. two, two, you know, two yards away, two blocks away, just impossible. Well, and it was Matumba Man, if I remember correctly, that was one of the first people that was playing Sniper in this tournament. Yeah. He was one of the ones that showed the power that this hero can have if left unaddressed. And oh, he might be getting sniped right now. Now he's over in the jungle, caught and gonna be killed off. No help nearby at all, as they will bring down Matumba Man again. Captain, hitting the dirt. No buyback either. Stun. Oh my god. Ori. 
gets the blink out before the right click comes in. There's no BKB, it was on cooldown. Yeah, he's on a couple of stun. Uh, He's had some nice little split push plays throughout this game, too. Kind of quiet a few times, but he has uh, done a very good job of just like keeping up his own farm and providing the safer areas for Monet for the vast majority of it. Master, keep the aggression going. There is not an answer. They don't have an Aegis, but they don't need one right now as they will take down another set of racks. And you can see Liquid on the other side of the map just trying to farm up, get into that next set of items, if at all possible. But Aster are not giving them the time. They don't want to force a fight without Death Prophet. It, the game can look a little sad, but you always need to make sure that you're giving yourself the best opportunity to win. So now that their Death Prophet's dead, it's... You just have to give up. You have to play for the last racks. You have to play for the... You have to play for the, the, the winning the game. You can't just play for... You know, we, we have to defend this racks, guys. It feels bad. Right. You have to just make your sacrifices. So when you say you have to give up, you mean give up the racks. Give up the not, racks, not yes, the yes, of course. Okay. <laughs> well... We'll see now as Blink, Boots of Bearing, Yules on the CM. Master have gone for all of these great oh, team fighty okay. oriented items. Maybe a, an actual moment. This could here. be big. Ori jumped. Oh, they miss. And BKB, the turnaround. Boxy immediately TPs out of there. And they're going to cancel the TP in from XXS. That was a really nice uh, try. If he got the fear on the right click into the yeah. jump, they actually would have bursted him. You have to do these small plays. Anytime you kind of split up your heroes, you go to the side lanes. Heroes always want to push the lanes out. Or he's been doing it all game where he'll go to a side lane, he'll push it out past the corner. And Liquid needs to set up these kind of traps to catch the heroes out. And every kill means so much for them right now. It is really your only chance, right? Or right. legendary high ground defense. Of yeah. course. <laughs> they still have the team fight. They still have the Mars Arena. This, the Mars Arena is one of the strongest spells to team fight with, especially once the BKBs are down. It's just the question of are you able to force them to BKB without pressing Arena? And so far, the answer has been no. Yeah, and Aster, uh, I mean, they're feeling pretty secure about this, just thinking, yeah, maybe, maybe we'll wait out for Roche, see what happens, see if we can catch someone coming into their base. They're, they're certainly in no rush right now. It is always tempting, though. You get that DD on the sniper bottled up. No boots, no problem. But they're doing the same thing that they've been doing all game. Hold an area, wait for Liquid to run into them. And when that will not happen, uh, downside is that Liquid are going to need to keep these waves pushed out. They can't even really leave their base right now. One of the nice things, uh, which is why Aster has been able to hold area so much, is that Liquid doesn't really have any heroes who push the lanes without showing. Slowly. Mm -hmm. Which, it's mostly been Zai the whole game. He'll run to a lane, he'll kill it, run to the next, kill it, and he's kind of just chasing them, making them chase him around and keep getting gold. But for Aster, you know, Leshrac has boots to travel, the Sniper can just shrapnel and the wave will die, the Pango can kill it in half a second with both his spells, and they're able to just push the lanes quickly and then regroup, whereas Liquid kind of has to slowly show their hero, show what they're doing. I'm looking for base I'm They might be many, but fuck it. Do you want to ult this guy? You need to stun him. Can we win? No? No, no, go, go. It did not happen. Yeah, they, they... <laughs> this is not going to happen. <laughs> It's, uh, it's uh, one of those tough ones. Those moments are always so difficult to get everything working together in concert. Um, and of course, just high movement speed on that hero as well. It's also just, you know, you, you kind of feel the pressure of the game. So you're trying to make all these moves. You're trying to make them work. And you only have half a second, one second to know exactly what you're doing. Yeah, that moment is very fleeting for the uh, side lane kill like that. McKay taunting it up there. Let's pop the BKB. Get out of dodge. Does have that rapier queued up as well. So Liquid may be a sign of the times and what they need, or at I least like feel like they need. Uh, to win this one. So they are just still incredibly in control of this game on oh, Aster. This, nice. this is my guy right here. This, this is, is my very, play. This is a very deep smoke. Yeah, this is this is what you got to do when you're five, right? Awesome. You got to get these wards down. They're just like, there's no way they'd ever expect this ward to exist in this game state, right? So you can go for even the more obvious ones in this case, especially when they have a gem. So you kind of got to YOLO on like the high ground ones at times. They know that this Roche fight is, if they're going to make a comeback happen, where it needs to happen. Hanging out that Roche pit. I wouldn't even mind him standing over in that corner there, to be honest. <laughs> Dude, that'd be crazy. Can you imagine? <laughs> the little Roche vision corner? The yeah. Hole. Yeah. yeah. I, I, there's been some crazy things with that. Uh, well, never since, you know, techies. Right, of like course. He's been gone. We don't have to worry about it as much. Yeah, the, great, the greatest hero. And you can see Insania. He did not take his gem with him on this mission. He doesn't even have a sentry down. They could, they could just have a word <laughs> of him and... I mean, if they got you, they got you, right? Why, yeah. why waste an extra bit of gold? He's I think nowhere maybe, else to be, you know? He's probably just... I would assume he's just playing to steal the Aegis. I don't think there's much more their team could do, but Matsu TP's back. It looks like they might want to just smoke up and take this Roche fight. 
They got the rapier on the courier. It's coming on out. We'll see if this is going to be enough now, as Aster have not left this entire side of the map with the exception of XXS, but they will head on in. Ori in position. The greatest bait of all time. Ready to go. Sport. They find them all. BKB's out. The Rapier's there. Is it going to be enough damage, though? They turn onto him. BKB beats away. Now the damage onto Ori. You will try to survive through a Requiem of Souls. A couple more punches. They did it. They got enough. XXS now still rolling back and forth on top of him. They buy back on the Sven, try and get into the fight. Bonet's coming. Mickey, he's got to be careful. Sniper, he's planking. He's running forward. No break. Trying to run, but they don't have it. So they keep alive the Shadow Fiend, but lose everybody else except Insania. Another Wait, big win. Live? Of all people. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Comes in, he throws a Static Storm down as well on top of the Sniper. Now, that was a great job delaying it, right? He like, kept the Sniper out of the fight for a very long time, so the Rapier could actually do a little bit of work, and they could take down Ori, but still not enough to get a, uh, an edge here for Liquid. And now Monet feels so, so strong as they walk up high ground. Ooh. A break, a punch, a kill. Oh, no, the Ulf! Oh, Bobaka, he's so strong. He gets the blink out after. They do it in style. Aster, keep the pressure going. They're going to win this game here as Divine Rapier is dropped. He denies his items, heads on in for the base. GG is called. It was a nice Rapier. Uh, the fight looked really close. They almost killed the Lushrak instantly, but he had Stormcrafter, I think, kind of delays it, presses Yules as well. It's like three and a half seconds. He's just in the air. They can't do damage. So it was a tale of uh, maybe the execution in terms of just like what was easy uh, for each team. You know, for Aster, they kind of just got to lean back, farm it up a little bit, didn't feel like this pressure was on them to make these moves across the map, whereas Liquid, they felt that pressure and they were unable to make those moves. And uh, sort of the classic tale of Mars in a sense, like we still see him picked because he does have this opportunity for the spear in the arena. And when you hit it, it feels really good. Uh, when you can't make those plays and connect those efforts for your team, uh, you can see yourself struggle quite a bit. I thought the biggest thing was the lanes were really nice, but the team fight are just uh, uh, Astro is so good. Well, that's what we're going to have to deal with going into the next game. And welcome back again. We're here taking a look at game number two. You wonderful people out there. What, you, what are you giggling at? We, you know, we didn't have the hand of God, the, the voice of God, so we just had the nice stare of us. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. Uh, we do have a freaking awesome game, though. We've we got do. the Ursa as the last pick. I was not expecting that one. I was thinking some crazy, like, Tinker or Magic Juice. Damage Hero. Yeah. And they're just like, no, we're, we're going to go and run at Roches and take down buildings. They're going to make it work. What do you guys think of the draft? I like Liquid's way more faster paced. I think uh, they're actually able to group up and fight. They have Beastmaster for the vision now. They have the Ursa to force Roche and take objectives. They didn't really get, they didn't get an Aegis last game, I think. No, they did so not. Now they actually have the opportunity to kind of group up and ball. Yeah, they certainly wanted it uh, very yeah. clearly. Aegis would have been great uh, for them in these circumstances. So uh, part of the issue was they were required to go for these initiations to start these fights, and they had a hard time doing it because they were certainly at a, a vision disadvantage, and you're hoping to sort of get rid of that problem here with the help of that Beastmaster. Yeah, I think the biggest difference with the Beast to the Mars is that even if the Beast doesn't buy a Blink, it just the Hawks give you vision. So now maybe the Marcy gets a catch. Maybe the Crystal Maiden gets a slow. It's... Sometimes a vision is a, you know, a stun enough. A stun enough. I like that. It's a good way to describe it there. And on the other side, for Aster, you've got a very different, uh, in some ways, looking draft and some things that are similar. So still running with that Lesh and then a support that mitigates the physical damage. Last time it was that spend with the Shard. This time it's going to be that Frost Shield. Uh, and then the other big last pick that I think is really interesting hero nowadays and what we've been seeing from it is this Brewmaster with the Aghanim Scepter build. Really cool stuff. We've been seeing it pop up. Uh, there's kind of two different styles of the hero I've seen. Uh, one is that they just rush Wraith Pact and they pretty much just play the drop Wraith Pact, drop splits, just no one takes damage in the fights. You just exist and you can't fight them. And the other is where they rush that Ags and they play more of a... Seconds, it just gives them a lot of plays. Either you can have the Fire Panda to farm, you have the Earth Spirit Panda to kind of just give you vision, give you a stun, or you have the Wind Panda, which catches, it dispels. Very nice, there's a lot of the Liquid Heroes. Kills the, all the summons from Beastmaster, purges the Ursa, can lift the Ursa. It, the Storm Panda itself was actually probably the best thing about Brewmaster in this game. Yeah, and that, that's very interesting too, because that, that's been a long talking point in terms of the uh, the Wind Panda and like this idea of like, oh, you can get rid of the summons and the dispels, but of course you were always limited to it being during the ultimate. And then in that downtime, you didn't have those options. But now with the addition of the Aghanim Scepter build, it's actually something that can be far more reliable on the hero. And at this point, it's actually brought him into being one of the more reliable heroes with the dispel. Right? Yeah, which again, the Ags is where you, have, you can choose one panda to always have, even if you're not on the ult. So you can just kind of run around the whole game with the panda, and it's leashed to you similar to a Lundrid bear, 
where if it goes too far, it gets silenced. But <laughs> look at that wall of text like, there. <laughs> it is a very complicated hero. If we're going to be real about it. Okay, here, here's my big advice to Dota players. If you think a hero is too complicated to play, it just play it. Yeah. Okay, you'll you'll get better. Everyone has to start somewhere. So don't be scared of the complicated heroes because they're really fun. I think I just teared up a little bit when you said that, Trent. What a, what a brilliant thought to end the day off. Just try, don't try. be on my team. Okay, all right, got it. Well, you had to ruin it, didn't you? Um, as we take a look at this mid lane, a couple of denies there coming out from Mickey. A similar story to what we saw before. And then the uh, big mix-up again is that Terrorblade that got taken by Aster uh, at that fourth pick for them. And I'm kind of a little bit concerned if this game goes later, what tools they have to deal with this. Is this a game where Terrorblade can just carry if it goes late enough? It, it can. He's the type of hero, especially for Shadowfiend, he can steal the aura, which is actually very you know, under talked about where you just you just steal this minus armor aura from Shadowfiend and that's one of the big things. He does so much damage because of that. And now you have it. And he does do the same thing where he outranges these Shadowfiend type heroes and he can kite the Ursa, but Team Liquid just does a lot of heroes that will latch on him and can just kill him either through Sunder or even after the Sunder happens. Yeah. Like the Ursa, the beast, he gets roared, he gets attacked by the Ursa. Ursa presses BKB and he's just kind of sitting there without much save. It's not a safe looking Sunder this game. You know, it's, if it gets off, I feel like there's still a lot of concern that can be there for you. Revile. Still have the stacks of Fury Swipes even after that Sunder, so. The, the biggest reason, one of the big reasons they pick it in this game is uh, Beastmaster is one of these zoo heroes. He has summons, he pushes lanes, he gives a lot of vision. And when you're constantly pushing lanes, uh, it give, the, the creeps just themselves give you so much vision. People are farming them if they're not. And so now that the fact that he, by himself, is able to summon illusions and kind of counteract that and even push into the Beastmaster without being there, it kind of evens up the vision game for Aster. Yeah, it makes it so that you're not caught off guard as much by the Beastmaster because like they want to like take you off even footing by just like, trying to upset your lane so someone has to rotate and go deal with that. And so if you can do it with the illusions, you're going to be a lot happier. And it's another case of potentially even getting an aura taken from a Beastmaster. The, big, the biggest question is uh, pretty much going to be the tempo and speed of Liquid. They have Beast and Ursa and Shadowfiend. They're all heroes that hit these very early 10 minute, 15 minute timings where once they get that, they're able to fight for the rest of the game. Just mm. keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting. And Aster, again, this Leshrac, they always want to go Bloodstone. They always want to hit this like nice mid-game timing where they're just constantly getting stronger and stronger. And whether or not he gets the Bloodstone in time is going to be the big question. Well, we'll have to watch for that. The how his laning stage plays out right now, a little bit behind the SF. 17 and 5 versus the 12 and 2. Nothing to super right home about as they're doing some more of the lane pull shenanigans up top there. And the other big thing to watch for is are we going to get some stacks? Because both of these heroes yes, deal with it really well as XXS just getting beat down by Boxy. Marcy is still an incredibly strong hero. And you can see he doesn't even feel uh, like he can connect that fully through. So a bit of a tough one. We'll get the Cinder Brew ignited and follow up with the cookie. But you can see XXS just wants to keep farming uh, while Boxy is going to head off to the other side and maybe make that rotation towards mid to Yeah, we see this nice move by Boxy. He does this a lot where he kind of pressures behind the tier one tower, either like trying to aggress on the poles or just bully the off laner. And because of that, he ends up in the tri camp. And now he's just behind the mid tower. I chase a couple punches and Ichu able to pick up that first blood. So while everything's happened top, down bottom, take care of business. And you can see even uh, Boxy, he just secures the water runes now. So that Mickey's gonna, they're gonna try to fight in the pop battle water runes. Oh, good stun. Oh, he steals it away. Bubba, but they pull him back. Ori, he's in some trouble. A couple more hits is all they need. Looking for the long range one. Can they bring him down? It is there. Mickey hits on three. And Boxy, maybe even gonna look for more from Bobaka. We'll see how it goes. But that's gonna be a uh, at least one of the water runes picked up for the SF. Some flashbacks in the last game. True. Mickey had a really nice game. He was 4 0 in the early game. Yeah. He also killed the Lush with this boxy rotation. Boxy was all over the map again as well, securing kills everywhere. This is the uh, the Marcy factor. Yeah. Anytime, every game, especially with Marcy SF, that's why we keep seeing this combo so much. Even past the sidekick mid game of the Shadowfiend timing, it's just the mid lane. I think it's funny too, because they also had these same warts, like through the river last game as well, spotting these rotations from Boxy, but <laughs> Marcy's just so mobile that sometimes it doesn't even matter. It's, it's, it's so fast. Even you can just TP and always be there. Yeah. They've actually watched Boxy walk his entire way up here, and he still might die. They this take would not him. be good. Oh good my God. kill as they bring him down. They watched him walk there. That's what needed to happen. It's just, it's a really strong combination. And playing together with that Ursa is pretty devastating. Now, this has come a little bit at the cost of Zai not having a perfectly great lane. Uh, but likewise, you know, the other two aren't doing too well either. So, Terrorblade, good start. 
the rest of the heroes kind of suffering. Yeah, Zygot, 16, 17 is one of the harder. He gets instantly counterpicked by the Terror Blade. He doesn't really get to ban. He's kind of thrown there. He's like, have a great game, Zai. You know, just go, go, try to go even in your lane. <laughs> See you in 15 enough. minutes. Yeah, know? that's good enough. Just maybe press a Hawk. Give us some vision at some point. So all in all, his goal is mostly just get the Helm of the Dominator. And at some point, probably kick the Terror Blade out of the lane with the rotation. We'll watch for that one for sure. Yeah, oh, to, to a lot of damage up there, trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with XXS. And they canceled the TP, too. So I'm not sure if anybody scouted that one or saw that, but Matumba Man going to be a little bit uh, under pressure here if he's not careful. Yeah, Boxy was worried that he was going to be dove, so he might have to show up. And instead, he just wants to lurk around mid because the six-minute runes were coming up. But the positioning uh, for Liquid just it was favorable for them. He does get the jump in there, though, at the Round two. Raze connects. Another one is there. Mickey, when he comes out, this is oh, going to be oh. easy. Easy baby, walking right up close and personal. Mickey finds the kill, and yeah, Foxy's been the story. He's been doing everything. This is also his first year playing four, right? He just switches yeah. roles, and he's just he's crushing every game against Marcy. He just body blocks people. He always gets the rotations. Last game, he had three kills within five minutes. Similar story here, three kills in six minutes. Yeah, just constantly move around the map. Four is for the uh, the offlaners that uh, they don't have the ego. You know, they don't need the farm. They don't have to hit the creeps. There you they, go. they actually just want to kill people. Chase, look for another. Have the pullback. Dispose, couple more leaps. Jumping around all over the place with this matchup. And XX is doing a good job of keeping his Snapfire alive. This combination of laniers, they've been together for so many years and have each other's backs. A lot of body blocks so far. True. Yeah, just constantly, everyone's just... It's it, you just see it the evolution of Dota. They, people just get so much better at these little small moves. Dude, they went in again. Up I top. think they thought Boxy was or uh, Bobka was gone. Chase, so, yeah, looking for the kill. Get one. That's gonna be a hit. But Boxy did go down for that one. Man. Yeah, they just keep running at each other. Full health, full mana. He's probably gonna TP mid. Fill yeah, the yeah. bottle. Mickey, Mickey, come on, spam it out. I'm coming. Maybe look for another go on to Ori too if the opportunity presents itself. And yeah, immediately refill bottle there. And XXS being a little bit zoned out there by Matamba Man. Likewise though, of course, with Bobaga going down, we'll do the same thing for Ori. Get the juices flowing and the arcane runes complete there. They're gonna find Insania. That's a juicy crystal main and well, she's got wind lace, but you know, she has no boots to lace. So she's still really slow. That's true. <laughs> it's a 3v2. The 50-50, who wins? Oh, Mickey gets it. Regen too, that would have been huge for Ori and we'll head right on in and start stealing some of these camps away. They play around the Shadowfiend really nicely. They're always constantly bringing support to mid, securing his runes, but... Now they're around the Shadowfiend, though. Okay, in some trouble. Do have the rebound, but I don't think they're going to be able to keep him alive. So they do make a solid move by Aster. Take down Mickey. Nine to five and everything just happening around mid. That was a split too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it was a split, was... so. I mean, worth, obviously. Uh, early split to kill a mid player, you'll take. Zai is now level six, he's holding his point. Uh, they don't really want to go to him before the Helm of the Dominator. So Monet's just gonna kind of be very confident in his lane, farming up, farming up very nicely. He's top of the net worth and the last hits. So it's gonna be pretty much up to Monet. It's his choice of, oh, do I want to go jungle? Do I want to go top? We could even see him Maybe in the next minute or two with the next split, TPing to the offlane, trying to pressure the Ursa out of the lane. Because again, Ursa does not jungle as well as a Terra Blade. Mm. So breaking down these safe lanes is kind of going to be the next big goal of these teams. Well, and they are bringing a couple other heroes up to the top side now. CM making the rotation as Boxy is already over there. Don't know if that's going to turn into anything. I though. feel like Boxy is just trying to force a TP. Like, yeah. He's just been under a ward for a long time. They do come and scale it out. Nice job from Insania. Gets the D ward there with the help of a Courier. Doesn't have to waste his Crystal Nova mana because he needs every little drop of mana you can get on the CM. It feels like everyone's trying to force Dyer's rotations without making them. Both of the supports sitting next to their their carries in the safe lanes and they're like poking, mm -hmm. trying to make them be like, oh, we have to TP. And then that's when they flip the map. Yeah. But right now, everyone's just being very careful, being calculated. No one's doing anything too crazy. No one's diving towers. I swear, this is the longest I've seen a TB in lane in, in quite a while. Ooh. I feel like every time I'm watching TB, he's getting set. I mean, he usually was like more of a draft priority, I guess, right? He was being banned more often. So now that he's uh, picked a bit later, actually getting a chance to farm the, the creep waves is pretty crazy. And in the meantime, Zai is just farming up that stack right there. A nice little injection of gold for himself. Uh, he's just going to try and 
claim the rest of these. Three points up in the axes. And the CM Aura certainly helping along the way as there's also a good Ancient stack there. So this is going to be the Helm of the Dominator coming out for Zai. While we are still waiting for that push out of that safe lane. And you can see that uh, Monet has made a bit of a rotation into the jungle now. So this game, Liquid is actually going to play for a slower timing. If anything, it looks like Batu is going to go for a Battle Fury on the Ursa. So they're playing to not feel pressured. The one really nice thing about it is now Brew Radiant cannot end his split early. The Ags doesn't give you the ability to end the split, so it's yeah. always the full duration. So once he gets BKB Battle Fury, he can just clear through the Primal split and there's nothing he can do about it. Big smoke down bottom, and Aster won't manage to find anybody except for maybe Insania here, who's hanging out mid, they run into him. Cookie won't quite connect, does have the split earth, but it's not there either. So Aster miss on everything. But Zai, in the meantime, you see he's gonna finish off that Ancient stack. They'll use the Glyph here to yeah, take down the tower. They are Glyphing as well for the Radiant though, of course, because mid lane, they got the Catapult, they got Shadow Fiend, and uh, Boxy's hiding behind the trees, but it's a Brewmaster, and he goes instantly for the split. And Boxy gets a little bit of a separation, haste away from SF. They're clear and clean and out. He was trying to hope to dispel the haste, I think, but Mickey got away, and Boxy kind of made the space for him to be able to run. Yeah, there was even a sentry down too in case he tried to go for like a storm panda play or something. Oh, name it's it's not the worst to like not get a kill with a, a Bruce split this early. I feel like you defended the tower, right? It was it was a one hero rotation to ensure that it stayed up. I think it also feels good just because they were able to make a move to their safe lane and take the tower. So again, now Monet's kind of once you take this offlane tower, your carry is able to freely leave the lane. It's a lot easier to push the lane out so that you have way more time before your tower gets hit. Now he can just TP, he can farm the Ancients. Snapfire ulti, down onto Mickey, trying to catch him. Slowed down for the moment, Boxy under fire, will get brought down, and Mickey dropped the Requiem, a quick connection for the kill, as again, supports die, but a bunch of big ultis used on Aster. Okay, it actually feels crazy to me that Inersa takes the 1.75 mana regen with a Battle Fury and a Crystal Maiden on this team. Yeah. It's, it's really, the, the reset time's that bad? Is that how bad that talent is? <laughs> It depends on a lot of the matchups in the game, mostly. It's more if you can't really latch onto a hero. I've seen yeah. it a lot for a second Medusa, because when she pops her stone gaze, you have to reset. Right. Having the ability to take these really long fights. But I think Liquid's kind of hoping to just be able to roar someone, he gets on them, and that's all that matters. He just will kill them yeah. in a roar. He just wants to spam. He just wants to farm it up on the Zerso. So Matu, just all the mana in the world for this bear. And you can see that Zai also going for a little bit of a unorthodox build from what we've seen before on these Beastmasters, going 4 4 0. So, not really Radiant opting to get that physical damage attack. boost up. They still will get some good pressure onto that bottom tier one tower here now. Yeah, a lot of the time where Beastmasters, uh, when they're getting early picked, the idea was that you'd pick an illusion hero because that would be able to kill the boars in the lane and it would kind of, you know, counter them. So, the the change was that Beastmaster started maxing axes because the illusion heroes have high Radiant's armor but low, uh, low health pools. So it's pretty much just a change to deal with the Terra Blade in the lane. That's why he was actually able to last it, and that's why his game is actually not terrible. If anything, it's actually better than the Brewmasters. Yeah. Right. So it, it was a nice adjustment to the lane in the game. Bounty. So. Aster, as they move up towards the north, Boxy runs in a Boba Cut. <laughs> the, the instant turn. Everybody's afraid. Dyer's that tells us the, the uh, tale of this game, huh? Yeah. We're very just uh, so. relaxing here. Uh, Vision-wise, it's uh, like we have a slight edge in terms of those deep wards. It's kind of been uh, the constant throughout this whole match, but Aster feeling comfortable enough still to make this move to the top tower. Even the lack of vision, they can always just send out some illusions if they've got some questions. Top tower has fallen. Down bottom, success attack. queuing up, trying to finish Radiant's off that raid pack again. I think, again, this game, Liquid is going to be the team that's playing for controlling areas of the map. Shadowfiend doesn't have a jump, Beastmaster doesn't go blink for a while, Ursa has a Battle Fury. They want to hold either their jungle with their Ancients, or they want to hold, you know, probably the Radiant big jungle in the bot lane. And on the side of Aster, they just hit their timings and they want to just keep going. Every time they have Split, once they have this Bloodstone, once uh, Monet, every time he has meta, he's able to walk into Roche, he's able to walk into towers. So we're going to see Aster's going to try to do a lot more of the aggressive plays, and Liquid's going to try to keep getting their timings, keep farming up, play a slightly slower game, but they're, they always want to be ready to fight. I feel like these fights are going to get pretty wild once they start happening, though. Like, uh, oh, yeah. like look how this, like, this Lich wants to play this fight, right? Yeah. Like this, uh, this Chain Frost is bouncing around, as well as the Frost Shield, doing so much work in this game. The Lich is a similar replacement to the Sven from last game, mm -hmm. where it just kind of enabled his team to walk in and just never die to the physical damage, specifically from the SF. And now there's SF and Ursa. So there's so much physical damage that this 
or he's able with this bloodstone. I think he can probably just walk into four or five heroes and yeah. probably survive. And like they need to clump, right? Like the Ursa, the Mars, and the Beastmaster, they tend to really get in there. And so Even that, all the summons. that chain frost goes in there. Like hopefully the chain like the summons are gonna have to tank some of this up, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean that's gonna be the thing that they hope to have happen. The other thing to watch for again is that Whereas Fen in last game, you had that AOE extra survivability. For this, it's just that frost shield and a single target. So maybe can, you know, change up their target prioritization a little bit, depending yeah. on how it goes. Ooh, excess, excess. rating. Okay, they get out the ulti. Can they get away on Matumba Man? With everybody rotating in, this was a nice move by Aster, and they'll take down the bear. Huge kill. This is where Liquid would typically run it at. They're hesitating, right? They're thinking about it. They start going, they stop, go, stop. Can they find sure. one in return, though? Insania right on top. The stun, it doesn't connect, but the Requiem very nicely played with the Dispose. Double ulti for the kill, and now more chasing going on as they do have a stomp available. XXS kind of in a weird spot now. Connects with the stun. The rest oh, of the boy. team trying to catch up and get into position. They're a little ways oh, away, but great. they got him. The pullback have Dispose for round two. Pull him in. Insania's there. Cookie for round three. Can they kill her off? Yes, they will. And at the same time, Mickey takes that mid tower with the help of a catapult there. So Liquid getting a lot done in those moments after losing their Ursa, taking advantage of the fact that Bruce Blit was down. Another interesting adjustment I see is that Mickey actually went for a Falcon Blade this game. I think usually the Shadow Fiends, I think even last game he went for the Dragonlance uh, before the BKB. So I think that's also kind of an indicator of how they want to play. Generally, you go Dragonlance because of the value adds when you push towers. Mm. Oh. Bitten off a little bit more they could chew there on Ori. There's no SF means not an easy chance for a kill. And of course, as we saw, the Frost Shield makes it tough. But now Roche is starting to And there's, there's no secrets here. They're seeing everything with the wards they have down on Aster. So they're going to move their way right to the pit. Starting to build up. Two stacks so far. They hit him with both. Chain Frost round three. Can they get him? Yes, they will. Ori goes down. Now looking for more XXS. Backing away and does have to run. Look at Boxy go. X, dude, still chasing. He's so low. Such low HP on Boxy. Trying to get away. Might just be able to do the rebound. How is this hero fair? <laughs> oh my god. That was so sick. So I was trying to send in the centaur as well to help. That space created because this Roche is going down. And they're so close to finishing off. XXS wants to run in, but now they're committed. Monet chases forward. Good can setup. setup. Can they do it enough for the kill? Mickey in trouble. That's one kill, one time dead. XXS brought down low. Insania doing a bunch with that ultimate. They pull back in that Shadow Fiend. Yeah, Mickey, Requiem to buy a little bit of space to chase down. They keep on wanting to fight, but Tumba Man on top of Chase dead. Monet. He doesn't have any more metamorphosis left. I don't think they can chase anymore, but Liquid, they win the Roche, they win the fight. Oh, Boxy. This guy, just, I don't even know how he does it. No HP that entire fight. Keeps coming back in for the rebounds, abusing those low cooldowns. And uh, Liquid, I'm sure, getting a little bit worried there as that, as that was starting to end, but taking down Exit Assassin and really, again, punishing the lack of ultimate on the Brewmaster. It looked a little scary. Mickey's BKB was cooldown, so when he dies the first time, there's a chance they burst him, but no stuns I think were available. And also something... Just, this was so long ago now, it feels like <laughs> when right. this all began. So much damage from the, the double damage room. They actually just chew through the frost shield. I think also, you know, that's a moment where as a Lesh, you might feel like you're safe, but as soon as that first raise hits, the second one comes in and you're slowed. <laughs> Look at this. 50 <laughs> HP, wands and two charges, oh, gets back out. Man. Radiance courier then he returns twice more as well from Boxy. Just absolutely ridiculous. Well, and that's so important because the Marcy just being able to give that, that sidekick over to these cores is so much of what makes this hero insane yeah, in the later Austin. stages. And it's what helped finish the Roche off, right? And then this is where things look scary. Tina gets to have a full ulti. Thing just keeps on going, helping to bring down XSS despite having the Frost Shield on top. And then manages to walk out as well at low HP. I think one of the cool things, which is it's actually what started this fight, and it's why Boxy lived, is that he is a casual cloak. There's actually three of them in this game, both Ori and um, the Lich, I think. Yeah, have the cloaks right now. So you can see a lot of the teams have started to do, they pick a lot of these early game damage heroes. Even Shadow Fiend does so much magic damage in the early game. Not just these casual cloaks can turn these fights. He has 50 HP. That's purely because of the cloak he buys. And it turns the whole fight around. Boxy being able to live there. Yeah, well, he's feeling very magical right now as Mickey eyeing up the arcane blink as well. It's come up after this. Has the fairy's trinket, so the full mage build is in effect. Certainly, we would love to see a game number three as we always do in these pivotal matchups here.
for the upper bracket. See if it ends up happening or not, but a BKB completed on the Ursa. And the next couple of minutes, I want to see where this like item progression goes for the Terrorblade. Uh, what he ends up looking towards next. That Scotty, obviously, really important for uh, you know stopping any of that extra region you get from the sidekick like steal all the rest of it. Yeah, the Scotty really puts the pressure on your initiation as liquid because uh, if the fight's not good, you don't get a great burst on an important target. That's where a terrible can really start turning around this fight with that Scotty. Is you just get kited out, you can't finish things off the way you want to. I think it's probably going to be a BKB after the Scotty, just to never be get feared by the Shadow Fiend. If you get BKB off before you get roared and the Lich uh, armors you, you also probably won't die. You always get your Sunder off, but now we see a smoke from Liquid. And that Radiant uh, Radiant's bottom scan connected, so they knew this was coming. Radiant's and instead, they're trying to counteract it. They are going to make the call to head down uh, for this bottom lane. They run right into Mickey. He will back out of there. Zai also still standing steady but everybody just back behind the tower. Now, Terrorblade is not here. Can TP into the fight. I feel a little bit scary and saying, yeah. just saw the last track. Root, Chase, Mickey, big ulti, but he doesn't get it off in time to stop the split. It might still be enough. The Tumba Man trying to beat through those Brulings, but they didn't get the Earth Panda. Now, Snapfire Ultimate still has Enrage. They get all the big ultis out. It, but the doesn't BKB worse for the for Aster. They use three ults, but they at least got the fight to be forced. They used Liquid to press their BKBs. They defended their tower. So they might even look to smoke out and try to catch the uh, Shadow Fiend off, you know, off guard. Feels scary though, without Bruce split. Yeah. It's, it's not easy to, get, to have a good fight. I guess the, the danger of having the, you know, the Leshrac and all the power that he can bring to the fight if they can get on top of that SF could be pretty huge. They're just going to play the game to get this uh, left track BKB. Radiance He's going to get it in 300 gold, but yeah, this arcane blink on Shadow is pretty interesting. Um, I think the idea of it is either A, to try to burst the Brewmaster before he gets ult off, or B, burst the Terrorblade before he gets spells off. It's pretty much just a bursting tool to kill yeah. one hero. It's similar to the old, the Yule Future Travel Blink 1000 HP Shadow Fiends that were oh, running yeah. around back oh, in the day. Those are still in all of my games. What do, you, what do you mean? Is that not cool anymore? <laughs> it's not as cool these days. Well, apparently it's pretty cool. Mickey is making it. He's going to we'll no Yules. See. No Yules, no Boots of Travel. Okay, fair enough. It's a little mixture of a build. Uh, so this one, it actually scales relatively similar to how the physical does in terms of strength, but in a very different way. So, Foxy setting this up. Spose, big jump, big burst, does have that Wraith pack down. Hit for so many RC. Misses. That's just, <laughs> and immediately just gonna run away. But bottom lane, they're getting some good pressure onto that tier two tower. We'll throw out the Frost Shield, keep it alive a little bit more against the Helm of the Overlord. Man, they, they get punished for the lack of ability to chase as well. Without the Bruce split there, like they, they couldn't do anything. They just walked away. Like Marcy and Ursa, they're all just kind of like hobbling up there with this Terrorblade and Leshrac, and they just gotta watch them go. Yeah, I actually think Ori might buy just a blink this game, just so he can blink BKB and try yeah. to force a fight to happen around his hero. Because Brewmaster doesn't really want to buy a blink. You don't want to blink in and then try to ult in front of the entire enemy team. Terrorblade as well just wants to exist somewhere in the back of the fight. And the supports are just bringing heroes. They don't want to go in. Yeah, XSS's blink is just going to be him getting an Aeon Disc and, <laughs> you know, hoping that lets him get his oh, yeah. ulti off by just being in the middle of things. Uh, more blinks in tow as the Ursa is going to finish his off. Coming out on the courier now. Still hanging on to these mid towers, too. Zai has purchased an Aether Lens instead yeah. of a blink, which is pretty cool. Uh, it means that he doesn't have to enter the fight. It's a little different because now it seems like they're not trying to play off the roar. If you don't have a blink, it's hard to just say, I'm roaring this guy. Go, go, go. Okay. Oh, oh, he goes go. right away. Cross shield. Keeping Ori alive. All that damage mitigation. A stun commitment. comes forward, but they got him. The burst was there. Matumba Man was not prepared. <laughs> that shard cookie hop looks so goofy. It's, it's like a crazy. big old arc in the air. Sinister gaze. Pretty this strong. Spell is so it, it just like the cast point of it is so fast. It always catches people off guard. I think even to this day, people are still surprised when they get sinister gaze by a lich. Yeah, I would agree. Usually they're like hanging back or they just die right away. You don't really expect them to be a shadow shaman. No. This uh, arcane blink is now gonna be completed and with Roche capable of respawning another minute, we'll have to see what the uh, avenue is that they want to go. But Shadow Fiend queuing up the Aghanim Scepter afterwards. So max burst potential. A interesting option and definitely going to need that Terrorblade to get into the BKB Dyer's now and have her reactions. The, the level 20 timing is also very good when he goes Magic and Ags. 
because it increases the uh, amount of time you can be feared, I think by like 1.2 seconds or something, max duration. And the fear goes back in. So once you arcane blink with an Ags, it's about four and a half seconds. Ori, they got him. He's dead. Completely oh, destroyed. It happens in an instant. As soon as that stun hit, we knew. It, it's funny because like cookies a save, but like even if the cookie's there, I don't even think it's gonna impact in time. You know, it, the travel time of the cookies is slow. Yeah. It's 0.8 seconds of cast point for the Shadow Fiend ult right now. Just like that, you can see the value of this Arcane Blink. I don't think I've seen an item to get picked up and then used immediately that effectively before in a while. Well, unfortunately for Liquid, it's not the dream scenario where it's an instant roach or something for them. It's going to be a bit of time, but halfway the minute and a half timer. You can see queuing up already some of the answers to this Arcane Blink. We saw the uh, Aeon Disc coming out now for the Brew. That's going to need to be the answer. But he's finishing up his BKB. He's just been kind of silent. Uh, past couple minutes, I think he's just farming. He's pushing out lanes, dealing with the Beastmaster. And there hasn't been really much, again, Astro doesn't have the greatest jump, or he has queued up that blink. He is gonna try to be the guy who goes in there and starts the fights for his team. But they're just kind of hoping Liquid walks into them. And they're able to take the fights like that. Yeah, I mean, it worked last game, right? You know, that's true. <laughs> even, even on the bot rune. Batu yeah. walks up on the high ground, they get two kills, and they just walk away and get more farm. I mean, I think the big benefit and the change that Dying we're seeing this time is, of course, Holding him, or cannot. Sure. That, 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 that. Fucking all dead. Just run in, he's dead now. Well, fake. Fake. <laughs> all dead, everybody's dead, that's great. Uh, I'm glad we were on a similar page there. I, I think the big difference this time is of course gonna be that Beastmaster uh, having those Hawks get sent forward so they get a little bit better vision before the fights start off. Yeah, the, the vision from Liquid is really nice. This game compared to the last. On the last game, they just kept blind walking the war. They blind walked into the pango. He always gets roll off. Aster, the Brewmaster doesn't have the same instantaneous impact of the roll. Yeah. Where it's just constantly stunning. He's a BKB tier you can't kill. The, even in this bot fight around the tier two, the Shadow Fiend ults and almost kills the two pandas instantly. Even though he doesn't catch the brew, he almost kills the ult. If the Earth Panda is the only one alive, it doesn't do anything besides sand there. Especially versus uh, an Ursa. <laughs> you know, if he spots that panda, the thing's just gone. Oh, for sure. Well, still playing around their vision right now. And Aster, they bring out another Blink Dagger. This time, I believe this is Ori. So, mass amounts of Blinks looking for the outplays. Uh, and as you mentioned, the casual cloaks here and there might turn those into bigger items eventually. Smoke up as they're going to head up north as Roche has respawned. We'll have to see if there is going to be that big pivotal fight or not around this we'll war. see if the, the evasion can save XSS here. He's got the uh, the talent for the plus one X brood up for the, uh, yeah. for the evasion. Sense of danger, moves right in, finds everybody, four staff, gets some separation, look at him with the stun. And that will be the death of the CM, but do they still want to fight? Dispose, pulls back XXS, looking for a chase. They buy back on the CM, TPing in for this fight. Mickey looking for the blink. They still keep him backing away, and XXS in trouble. Aeon Disc summons, thinks about popping the ulti, but doesn't drop it yet. Snapfire ultimate, yes, four staff separating this. Sai in trouble, roar. Immediately, Mickey gets it, the stun on everybody, but it's not going to be enough damage. Ori survived through it. They need to run away now, but Tumba Man TPs out, will manage to secure that one but so much used by liquid and they still ended up losing that fight immediately into the pit from aster it wasn't enough damage on monet he has the titan sliver so it takes a little less magic a little less stun from the fear and they don't want to give this up uh, this isn't how they want to go out right now there's great vision here from aster though obs and sentry nearby gonna spot those hawks see what's going on they take it down immediately still in the pit looking for their setup here no requiem Tumbo Man, play. jump forward, Boxy right on top, it's not quick enough though, they went too early. Now the axe is getting thrown, Mickey in trouble, right on top of him, blows up the Shadow Fiend, and Matumba Man does not have an option. This Frost Shield is impossible to fight in to for that Ursa, and Boxy, oh, Chain true. Frost bouncing back and forth, takes him down. Liquid committed everything for this, and they're gonna get nothing. Oh, Boxy. A little bit of help there from the neutral creeps carrying on that chain frost right from Insania to Boxy and the trolls nearby. Into the pit they go and Aster after on the back foot for so much this game waiting for that perfect moment they find it. What a great way to bait that entire fight setting of the outpost. Unreal and a little bit of that early commitment there ends up getting punished. That blink. I mean you can see the big difference it's making for Ori, right? He's able to get into the most important part of that fight right now and force all that attention next to Mickey. Leaves Monet sort by himself. He can clean up some of these summons that are nearby. And uh, once they take care of Mickey, even with the buyback, he can't get back in time.
I mean, the biggest question now, I think, is uh, the Axe is really important. Mickey needs this Axe. Uh, it does two things. It makes the fear come back in after it goes out, and it also reduces the cooldown, which means that you can use every single fight. You don't have to worry about it. And the the biggest thing as well is that they use the Shadow Funeral, and they don't get a kill. Yes. Yeah. When his whole build is centered around using the ult, and you use a stun, and you don't get the kill, you kind of feel bad. This re-engage fight at the Roche Pit, he doesn't have BKB, he doesn't have ult, or he just blinks on him and he has no place. He doesn't have the physical damage to deal with him. He doesn't have a pike. He doesn't have a way to kind of disengage from the fight, so he's just stuck there. 1,500 more gold for Mickey, And we'll see if that's going to be enough to get him where he needs to be. Does hit that level 20 now, uh, but still not an easy position to be in. As May runs into the SF. No way to break that TP, obviously. And man, yeah, this Lich, he choose so many of these times has been the difference maker, it feels like. You talked about that Frost Shield on the, the Leshrac. There really hasn't been an answer for it. It's just really nice for us all the Dire Heroes, and the adjustment they made for, with the Arcane Blink is really nice for it. It gives them the magic damage to kill, but it hasn't really been enough, and it's actually just been enough to deal with this Ursa. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of uh, just like last game where they they sort of had a good idea in terms of like how to make it so they're not under so much pressure, but by going for this magic build in order to solve that problem, it actually recreates that pressure issue through the ultimate since it is, it's so dependent on that to work. And it, uh, I guess it just comes back to vision again, right? So like make sure you get that perfect setup and everything goes right now. Speaking of vision, Ooh. it does uh, the No Lich, vision. no Lich there and he is dead. Oh, wow. Brilliant play, immediately get in there and find him. Uh, or he get away with that the entire time last game, right? He yeah. had so many split push moments exactly like that where he'd be at the tower completely by himself. And now they have that big burst damage. Well, this game still on a knife's edge. They have the Aegis on that Terror Blade, but we've seen the power that you can have with both split push in this game, uh, as well as just one big burst if everybody is not in position. So Aster get punished. A DD rune spawning bot though. This is the same timing Astra had last game. Monet just picks, picks up a butterfly with an Aegis. He's probably going to look to wait for Ori to get alive and then try to maybe even push the mid. Rex, I, I don't really see a way for them to kill him twice. I think to kill him once, they have to use the Shadow Fiendle, and that means that when he respawns, he's kind of free, especially if he hasn't used his BKB. Yeah, feels like it's one of those situations where maybe you can try and get the, everyone around him. Ooh, Boxy needs to get in towards some help. Cookie forward, but the jump away and as y'all mentioned, the Agonim's completed. And this still sitting there on XXS. You can see that still a very even game here. And Brewmaster is going into that Aghanim Scepter himself next. And they will kill off all the creeps. Link being there. Yeah, at the same time, uh, Astra doesn't Daya's feel the need to force some plays if they don't feel comfortable taking these towers, taking this tier three. Because, again, they still have a terrible blade. They have so much of the map under their control. They're still kind of getting a gold advantage. So. They're, they're line up scales. They're not on a timing. I don't think either of these teams are actually on a timing. Both of them are playing for different items, different levels that the 25s are really strong. So it's kind of up to whoever is feeling their strongest at the current moment who's going to want to take the fights. Both supports behind as well as XXS, but Monet in very far. Going to get stunned. Matamba Man goes forward. They don't want to drop the Requiem for nothing. Rooted, Manta. Matamba Man trying to deal with these illusions as Monet so down to half HP. Yeah. Oh. And a chance, a burst, and oh, but the Keeping him alive, but the Spagati is doing too much. Slowly burning them down one by one. They need to jump in with Mickey in a second, but I don't know if they have the damage. Mickey thought about it, gets the blink canceled, has to run away. They buy back on Matumba Man. They're coming in for the racks as Aster want to siege this down and take a substantial lead in this game. 8k gold lead already. Monet builds it up. Man to touch to get away. They don't have enough. Sunder, seven seconds off cooldown. If they're not careful, he's just gonna be able to get another round of it. And in fact, he's just gonna walk away. Aster, come in, get what they came for, secure that first set of racks. Actually just like teasing with the Aegis the entire time there, right? Trying to commit you to this bad fight so you can jump on Monet, get you convinced that, okay, we, we can get the kill without using the Rec Room, right? That, that, that's what we need in this case. But Aster, the entire time through the series, like the way that they read the fights, it feels perfect. They, they correctly analyze the threat levels that are coming from each of these heroes and the positioning by Ori. Like I feel like he he's playing on that perfect little bit of risk. Right? He's assessing where can I blink in where I'm so close to my allies, but I'm, I'm creating a, a major problem for that Liquid. And that's what happened to Zai. He just blinked on top of him that fight, forced to throw out a roar. They couldn't coordinate any of their efforts. That's what gives them the, road, the, uh, the racks in the back. It's also, uh, they use the Aegis at the most annoying timing to push with an Aegis. Yes. There's about 50 seconds to a minute left on oh, it. Yeah. So you kill him and you're like, okay, well, we 
we just wasted spells. We didn't gain anything from this. It's not like, you know, he had four minutes left. It's ex about to expire, but then if you don't deal with it, he just takes the racks for free. And of course, that is what ended up happening this time around. It's going to set up for uh, most likely another pivotal Roche fight uh, for the next couple of minutes here when that does come back around. But a 10k gold lead. Aster was able to secure off that with a couple of buybacks spent to boot. Liquid, you got to be feeling a little bit afraid at this stage. But they do get the BKB completed on the Beastmaster now. Many BKBs online. It feels like this next Roche for Liquid is the, is the big one. This is this Roche is really important just because of how kind of committal Liquid's lineup is in terms of they need a BKB versus every single hero on Aster. They need to yeah. use Shadow Fiend ult to get a kill. They need to use Roar to get a kill. So anytime they have two lives, they have buybacks, they're fighting, even if they're fighting in the Aster base, it's really scary just because of the amount of stuns that Aster has compared to Liquid. And Liquid currently no gem, so no way to try and go for D wards or anything. And there, it's a pretty valuable vision still remaining uh, inside of Aster. So we're spotting out like when Zai's rotating through those ancients, that could give them the edge when it comes to prepping and setting for the next Roche fight. A scythe as well there too. So all that pressure of the perfect fight for Liquid, great item for breaking that up. You know your combo breakers, the Aeon disc, but at the same time you're gonna have that scythe just. Uh, catch someone off guard in engagement. They instantly smoke out. They're gonna try to catch them in their own jungle. Just Roche isn't alive. It can't even start spawning for the next minute. So you just want to kick them out. This blink scythe is just it's, it's careful. So Insania, it's the first one they find. The cookie away that gives some vision, but they're barely able to catch. The sinister gaze is enough. So Boxy will go down. Liquid are gonna be thankful it's not more. But Aster, keep this pressure on. And they know where they are. They saw the couriers moving through their ward right now. That's why they're running up here and catch that ward from Liquid as well. Get the D ward up on the high ground. As Aster continue the bully. And an AC almost completed on XXS. The hardest question right now for Liquid is uh, what, what is their timing that feels, makes them feel like it changes anything? And are they too far away? So Mickey's going for a sheep, which I think will change a lot. It lets him actually kill these heroes by himself and not have to worry about the stuns. And Matu is going for an MKB, but they're both about 3,000 gold away from their items. And I don't think they'll have the time to wait for these items, so they have to decide whether are they giving up Roche and taking the items, or are they going to try to force a fight and just take a proper positioning fight, which is also another option because, again, Liquid win can win a fight based on positioning. Yeah, if, if, if they get that big if jump. If they get the jump, if they get the burst, the Terrorblade dies, maybe he doesn't have a buyback. He, he is buying out right now. He's actually buying a full Daedalus, so he won't have buy if they kill him at this Roche fight. Well, it's a, a similar timing here as well for that uh, Aegis, but halfway through, so... See if they can find that positioning, and yep, Daedalus is there, delivered. And you can see the Hawk scouting for the Roche respawn time. It is a minute away right now. As Aster going into the pit, they check it. That was spotted by Liquid. And it does look like they'll have at least a little bit more time now to get in towards those items. Not sure if it's going to be enough, as you said. Also, something cool is uh, Monet has a Blink Dagger. So I think his idea is even if you blink on the Shadow Fiend, if he doesn't get the Arcane Blink buff off, his ult is not as strong. He right. can't use it as fast and you kind of force it. So once Shadow Fiend gets, Shadow Fiend can never get gone on if they yes. want to win the fight. He can't get clipped by anything that cancels his blink. He can't get hit once by the Shadow Fiend or slowed or anything. He has to be able to be like completely free and get a jump when he wants to get the jump. So all these blink daggers on Aster now, both the cores of the Lesh and the Terror Blade are going to kind of cancel that out. It kind of, unfortunately, it feels like a lot of their cores feel that way, you know? I mean, I guess yeah. Zai is the one who can maybe be in there a little bit with the help of some creeps. It's pretty much the only one. And of course, you see those hawks flying over the top. They do scout out that Aster is sitting in the exact same spot where they were last game. They get into the MKB for the Ursa. A couple of other items getting picked up. They're putting down floor rugs. They're hanging some nice decorations to the walls. Hey, great picture of the family, you know? Really furnishing the environment. It's nice. But the... Uh, there's a, oh, interesting. The Timeless Relic is given to uh, Insania, which is really nice for his slows and then the Spell Prism for Mikke. Looking for a big wraparound here uh, from Liquid as Aster on the other side of it. We'll have to see if they want to head on up and find a way in the pit, but the Terrorblade already seen that Roche is back up. Monet is just going to keep fighting. They're waiting for them to come to oh. Aster. They just need to catch the right hero on Aster. Uh, if they catch the Brewmaster, Dyer's sad. He has a hand. If they attack. catch the support and you have to use your ult on him, it's also kind of sad because now you can't use him on the cores. So you have to catch the Terrorblade or you have to catch the Lesh. Aster is just in such a nice position that Terrorblade Illusions are breaking everything so they can't sneak Roche. They're playing under their wards. They're playing as five, so you're going to constantly have to walk into the team. They're even pressuring the base with the Illusions. 
There's just so many things that is kind of pulling Liquid apart uh, just around the map. He also just hit his buyback as well on, on Monday as well. So that very small window, but could have been hazardous, is now gone too. A minute and a half left on Ursa's, but doesn't have the gold to get there once it comes back up again. <laughs> it's actually impossible to jump at first. Like, <laughs> look at how he's sitting. He's just got he's got heroes on both sides. He's ninja geared there. He's just smoked, smoked up, up, hanging out, yeah. making sure that the hawks don't spawn anything. He's just, he's not the guy you're going to get. They fully recognize it's the only way they lose this fight. This is the most defensive play that I feel like I've seen from a team in forever. It's because they know. And that's after last game. Exactly, <laughs> right? Exact same thing. It, it's, it, they know that this is the only way it works. And there's creeps hitting the tier four towers. Like, Liquid need to deal with this. They're literally going to lose their base if they don't make a move. And Liquid, they just can't. They're, they're stuck in the chokehold. But Tumble Man heads back, oh. and now they're all alone. The second they see the TPs, they just walk in the rush. Aster. Ready to go. But Tumba Man and the rest of them are going to need to get back out close and quick, but it's not going to come no, quickly no. enough. I believe it's Shadow Fiend himself who says, uh, outplay. You know, Unreal. That's how this feels. Such clean Dota being played by Aster. Oh, he wants that Agnes Blessing. He's taking it. And now smoke up from Aster. We'll see if they make the move. I'm the Shadow Fiend now. I got the Terror Wave. They find one. It's XXS. That's not who you want at the start. Or he moves on in. KB already out, Matumba Man runs away the tear wave, walk forward the Frost Shield, it's not quite enough from Matumba Man, and now the Hex, oh, the crap. turn, they chase him down, they kill him out, no buyback for two minutes, and just like that, Aster take a dominant control over this game, 20k gold lead now, with that Aghanim's in tow and the lift up there, they found Mickey, can he manage to escape, the BKB runs on in, pulls him out, nicely done. But the chase. On the Marcy. And they're ready to go for the next round. Up to the high ground. Aster, they can feel it now. His eyes in behind, but no roar here. Just has to watch. See if they can find a plan. Mickey oh. just in the fountain. Open for something. A Tumba Man does have buyback in 400 gold, but it's not going to come soon enough. Aster, they're not going to give him the time. The Force Staff keeps Insania alive, but on to the Tier 4 Towers now. Aster, the last team in the upper bracket from China. Head on in. Mickey goes with the big ulti. Is it going to be enough, though? XXS pops in immediately, turns to fight, looks for some more. Monet, he's actually not hitting the throne right now. Oh, here he comes. But they move on in, and Monet, ready to battle, heads on towards the Ancient. They start beating away. It. Eyes on the prize, the chain frost back and forth between the two of them. And with that weight of fear, they move away. Another round of it, jump forward, but GG is called. Aster, they win the game, they win the series 2 0 over Liquid. Really nice performance from Aster. I think, uh, especially the way they play the, the mid game, the late mid game, when they are slow in their holding areas in the map and they force the lanes. Always pushing the lanes out with the Terror Blade, always forcing Liquid to have to TP back, make moves out, and then Aster's always getting the things that they want. Yeah, Monday played a, a fantastic macro game uh, there on the Terror Blade, right? Like, both this concept of like 